Okay, I don't think anyone's having audio issues, so we'll get going. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Carly with West. For those of you who are unfamiliar, we host a free webinar usually every month, but now on a weekly basis. These webinars are recorded and can be viewed anytime at our website. Today, our topic is the customer lifecycle and is presented by Preston Cicchini, Senior Marketing Advisor at William Joseph Communications. If you have any questions during the presentation, please write them in the chat box and I'll let Preston decide if he wants to answer them during or after the presentation. Thank you for joining us today, Preston. Please begin whenever you're ready. Awesome. First of all, uh, thanks very much, Carly, and uh, the entire team at WESC for allowing us this opportunity, and even to Jake McLaren at Larma Hill for setting this up. Jake, uh, down in Regina, um, works for Larma Hill, and Larma Hill provide support in the customer lifecycle with a product, um, a client relationship management system. And we'll touch on that as we get a little bit deeper into today's uh, presentation. I'd also like to take the opportunity to uh, acknowledge that it is Women's Entrepreneur Week here in Saskatchewan. So congratulations and uh, a big shout out to all you women entrepreneurs that are uh, making great strides and, and moving the dial. And hopefully you can take away some of today's um, content and uh, and keep moving that needle. So today's main objective, um, we'd love to give you some tidbits on how to identify the current needs of your customers, to understand where they are in the customer life cycle and how you can meet their immediate needs, maintain that relationship and ultimately create a loyal customer and uh, a brand advocate. So in today's presentation, we'll be identifying the different stages that exist in the customer life cycle, assessing how your business converts and helps customers progress through those stages and identifying potentially any gaps that you may have. I'll start by telling you a little bit about myself and my role at WJ, a little about WJ itself. Philosophy, positioning statement, and even how we address the customer lives here. So when we dive into the customer life cycle itself, identify those eight stages, break them down. I'll show you some marketing tactics that support each of those stages as we are obviously putting WJ spin on this customer life cycle. Um, keeping in mind, there's definitely some overlap in those tactics, and then we'll finish each of these stages with some real world examples. After those examples, I'll pause for a little discussion. If anybody has any questions or would like to bring anything up, just type your message in the message box in the bottom right, and we'll handle those as we can. So um, are there any questions before we do get started? If not, I will dive right in. Fantastic. So a little bit about me. Obviously, as you know, uh, my name is Preston Cicchini, a senior marketing advisor here at William Joseph. I've been in the sales and marketing realm for over 10 years. Here at WJ, I'm responsible for a number of areas that include public speaking like this opportunity, business development, project management, and client relations. So in regards to the customer lifecycle, I'm very much involved and have a part to play in every single one of those stages. This is our team at William Joseph today. We're made up of about 30 individuals. Uh, we have uh, everything we do at William Joseph is led by our strategy team. So we have about five MBA students that lead all of our marketing initiatives. Um, we have a client management team that I am a part of, a content management team, a digital strategy team, web development team, um, and a social media team that, that keep everything rolling here at WJ. So we've been in business now for about 17 years with offices in Red Deer, Grand Prairie, Calgary, and of course, here in Saskatoon. A little bit about our philosophy at WJ is we really believe in the four tenants to be, to be successful as an organization. We, you need to be original. So we tell all our clients that success is all about standing out and communicating unique position and value. And we'll show you how that's important in relation to the customer life cycle here in this presentation. We figure out what makes your product or service unique, ideal to your audience and the best means to connect with, the, with that audience. So we always wanna provoke action, which is the second tenant 
Um, marketing, we acknowledge, is an investment, one that can generate powerful returns. We know clients come to us not just for compelling design, but extraordinary outcomes, and that's what we strive to achieve. We agree, we agree and believe that to have value, marketing must drive performance. And we'll show you again how that relates to the cu customer life cycle. We very much focus on experience, and that is one of the stages of the customer life cycle. Um, forging relationships with customers across the life cycle is the crux to a success successful marketing. We craft marketing strategies and designs that connect with people at each stage from awareness through to engagement to purchase and then endorsement. Our intent at each stage is to compel people to act through excellent customer service throughout the life cycle. That relationship should end, um, should be created for a long and lasting relationship. We stand together. Uh, most of all, we believe in working as a team at WJ with internal colleagues and external clients and partners. Our agency is structured to foster collaboration and become an extension of your organization. We work with companies um, that have no marketing team and we act as that marketing team. And then we also act uh, work with companies that have a full range of a marketing team and we just fill in the gaps where, where they need support most. So at WJ, this is our positioning statement. This is something that we craft for all of our clients when they engage with us. So William Joseph, we're a fully integrated marketing agency that empowers organizations to achieve bold performance targets and succeed on a local, national and international scale. Our commitment to founding all of our solutions and strategy ensures clients connect with their ideal target audience and compels them to act. With us, with us as allies, our clients will have the vision and ability to create extraordinary outcomes through objective driven marketing. That's who we are, what we are, how we operate, and then who we operate for. So when it comes to the client life cycle, this is um, definitely a piece of the tactical phase for us. This is William Joseph's approach to marketing here. And I'll, I'll dive into it a little bit um, just to give you the framework. We employ a four phase strategic thinking model to, to deliver, create, and a marketing strategy. In that marketing strategy, we map out a customer life cycle for our clients in the tactical phase. We identify the gaps in their marketing to make appropriate recommendations. However, it's really important to complete the legwork first and the legwork and the insights and the brand. The recommendations that we always make are supported by research and data. And we also have to craft a brand that is authentic, differentiated, and compelling so that we can get people to sit up, take note, and act at all stages of the customer life cycle. So when we talk about great understanding, we need to understand not only your organization, but the industry in which your organization exists. We need to understand your position within that industry so that we can make sure that you're differentiated enough to stand out. And then we need to understand your customers. Your cust Understanding your customers is vital. We need to understand their motivational triggers. We need to understand um, their wants and needs. We need to understand what channels they're on so that we can be as efficient as possible in our marketing efforts. So those are some of the ideas that uh, that are foundational. Diving into what is a customer life cycle. So a customer life cycle is the journey a business organization or individual takes with your brand and company. It's a map or plan of how and when they come into contact with your brand. It begins with the initial contact. It includes the sales process and concludes with retention, client management, and ultimately re-engagement, hopefully. It consists of many client touch points, each requiring a decision to be made. These touch points are opportunities for either a negative and a positive experience with your brand. Um, and it's important, obviously, we're gonna strive for positive experiences, but it's inevitable that sometimes negative experiences do happen. So how do we set ourselves up to handle those negative um, experience? They are developed with specific objectives in mind to keep the potential client organization 
or individual moving forward. And there's some definitely some considerations that we'll get into as we dive a little bit deeper into this um, in order to do so. Why it's important to map out a client a customer life cycle, it's to identify all the touch points a client has with your brand. The customer life cycle, life cycle map also helps lay out which tactics and resources exist at which point in the journey. Um, it also helps us understand the next step in the cycle so that we can effectively guide and lead a potential client or current client to become to the next step or become an advocate for our organization. It allows us to think strategically about specific marketing tactics, about mar the messaging that we're using and the content that we're, uh, we're deploying. It allows us to understand if we have any gaps that need to be addressed. If a client, uh, if we're falling short in one area of the client life cycle, it could be because we're, we don't have messaging or we don't have a tactic that it specifically addresses the need at that current time. So we'll definitely dive into that. At William Joseph, we really believe that these are the three high level sections that your customer will fall somewhere within these. So the first being awareness. Um, in the awareness space, we identify that a person or a client has a problem and ensure that we are the desired solution for that. The buying space is where we facilitate the buying process to close the sale. And then it comes to consumption and loyalty, keeping customers engaged to facilitate referrals. So anytime that a customer comes in contact with your organization, they will fall somewhere within these three categories and we'll break these categories out further. Um, but just understand these are the ABCs of, of a customer life cycle. Diving into the eight stages. So these are the eight stages of the customer life cycle. Um, and I want you to forget for a second that you own a business or you work for a business um, and pretend for, for a second that you're actually throwing a party. Um, I wanna be able to help you relate this a little bit. In the awareness space, if we're throwing a party, this is the invitation that you send somebody. It can be mailed out. Um, it could be beautifully colored. You could have balloons on it. Um, it could be in a, a Facebook event that we've created, or it could simply be the fact that we bumped into this person, bumped into them at Starbucks, and you tell me that you're throwing a party. This is you inviting me to that party. That's the awareness space. The research space or so the research stage is where if you've invited me to your party, I check out where you live. Um, is it legit? Do I feel safe if I come to your house? I may ask a couple of friends if they've ever been to a party that you've had before. Are they good parties? Um, I may even check with my significant other to see if it's okay that I go, but it's where I research to feel, to understand if I feel safe interacting with, with you or coming to your party. The comparison stage, that's where if you told me that your party was on a Friday night, I may go check out to see if there's other parties to attend on Friday night. I may be go to check out if there's a good movie playing. This is where I check comparable options so that I can make the best decision possible. The selection stage, this is where I've made a decision. I'm in, there are no better options. I've decided that I'm going to come to your party. The purchasing stage, this is the stage in which I think about how am I going to respond or how am I gonna RSVP to your party? Do I have to send you an invitation back in the mail? Do I post a response on the Facebook page um, or do I simply call you back? So that's the purchase stage. The experience stage, this is where I get to your party. Um, and I ask myself, is this party what I thought it was going to be? Or did you fail to mention that this party was for your 80 year old grandmother and it's tea and cookies and totally not what I expected? Or is it a great party? Maybe you have the Hunter brothers um, some live music, all of my best friends are there, and this is exactly what I expected. Retention and loyalty stage, this is where I analyze, did the, ex did the experience meet or exceed my expectations? If so, chances are I'm gonna be back, um, you're gonna retain me, I'm gonna become a loyal client, I'm gonna be the advocates. If the experience was great, if the party you threw was fantastic, chances are I'm gonna tell everybody about it, 
and the next party you hold is going to be bigger. So you get you better get ready for it. So that's kind of breaking down the four stages of the customer life cycle and something that maybe we can all relate to a little bit. Diving into the awareness space. So oftentimes this is the start of your introduction. This is your first impression um, with an organization. This is where your relationship with your customer could begin when they first become aware of your existence, of your brand, your product, or your service. Your objective here, again, is to help identify that the potential client has a problem. You present yourself as a viable and trustworthy solution. Keep this in mind. On average, we see about 365 marketing messages each day and about, and we notice about 86 of them. So you can kind of understand how important it is to stand out amongst the crowd. On top of that, people generally have to see your message about seven times before they're even aware of it. So again, it's important that you layer your messaging at this point in time to ins and ensure that you're differentiated so you stick out amongst the crowd. Remember, this is the invitation to that party. Some of the tactics and considerations to, to be aware of in this space, the tactics that you may deploy, especially as an entrepreneur in the awareness space, these are networking opportunities, they're speaking engagements like we are involved in right now. Um, this could be your social media strategy. Videos are a great way to build awareness and really tell people what your brand stands for and what your story is. Again, presentations like this, trade shows, uh, blog topics, digital marketing is a great um, way to build awareness for your, for your organization. These are all very much cost-effective marketing initiatives. Um, some considerations to, to take into account. It's really important at this stage to have calls to action. There's actually a billboard campaign outside in Saskatoon right now that I drive past all the time. And every time I see it, I, it just screams to me because there's no call to action. There's no a call to action is asking you to do something, whether it be visit us at and you have your URL on the on the billboard. It could be a phone number on the billboard. It's asking the audience to actually do something. So make sure you have your calls to action. Links, if you're putting out specific content on social media, um, make sure you link, you provide a link as well. Um, a lot of times your websites are built with different content sections in mind and you can actually direct a person exactly where to go on your website to read the content you want them to, instead of just generally putting them, uh, guiding them to your homepage and making them filter through the different sections of the website to find the content that they're looking for, make sure you put in appropriate links. Social shares are a great way to build awareness, making sure that your company is, is Google accessible, and we'll speak to that a little bit further here, um, and making sure that your, your messaging is audience specific. So not all the time are you speaking to potential customers sometimes you're speaking to amplifiers or sometimes you're just talking to the industry in general this is a perfect example of that we're trying at wj through this presentation we're trying to provide industry knowledge so we're not looking to get a sale um, our messaging isn't designed to getting a sale it's about providing value to the industry um, i'll show you a couple of examples of what i mean by um, speaking to amplifiers as well. And then obviously when the time comes for it, we do want to speak to those potential customers, but the messaging we use at that point in time is very much specific to garnering a sale. So the two things that are most important about this slide, I believe are making sure you have a call to action so you can guide the person to the next stage of the customer life cycle, and then always including links. So at William Joseph, we have something that's called William Joseph University. We have presentations that we make. This is about providing industry knowledge. So in our discussions or in our presentations, we talk about the art and science of effective marketing. That's one of our presentations. The second presentation that we have is about connecting your business with your customers. So we talk about 
understanding your customers, understanding the channels that they're listening to so that you're speaking specifically to them on the right channels and not wasting and, and being as efficient as you can with your resources. We talk about the importance of content in your digital marketing. And we also talk about, have a presentation about the importance of brand and the importance of storytelling and the importance of connecting with your audience on, on an emotional level and going past the features and benefits of your of your business. So these one hour presentations cover a variety of topics. Um, they range from evolving powerful brands to the core tenets of developing successful strategies and positioning your company for success. So they're about lead generation and like I said, providing content to the industry. So I mentioned amplifiers. And this is a great um, example of that. I'm not sure if any of you tune into Global in the morning. However, every Tuesday, every first Tuesday of the month, Ryan Townen, our CEO, um, has a spot on Global News in which he provides marketing advice uh, to a broad audience. So being connected with Global News is an example of being connected with an amplifier. Global News has a very wide reach in terms of who's watching that news. Some of it may not be industry specific or may not be looking for marketing and advice, but the idea is that the fact that they have a wide range and they amplify our message. Another great example of this, I'm sure you're all aware of, is the Dragon's Den. So a lot of times when entrepreneurs go on the Dragon's Den, their primary objective isn't even to garner a deal with one of the dragons. It's actually to amplify, amplify their story, get their brand awareness out there to build some credibility. So another example. This is a great campaign that's out there right now, actually. And there's nothing about selling in this ad. Um, Dove is a really known, a really well known for their campaign that addresses the image and idea of what beautiful is. Obviously, this is very timely with what COVID has brought about for us. And Dove has taken the opportunity to define and build out their brand in terms of what it stands for um, and their story. As And it's an extension of an already existing awareness campaign. This one obviously includes men as well. And this is about strengthening your story to resonate with people on an emotional level and not looking for that sale. These next two slides illustrate how we at William Joseph would go about strengthening the story for a company to increase brand awareness. So Silverback is a steam and heating rental company based out of Red Deer, Alberta. They have equipment that is mobile, eco-friendly, and more efficient than other competitors. They also offer the largest selection of steam boilers and fluid heaters in Canada. Despite this, they had little brand awareness in the market, and their communication across the marketing materials was really inconsistent and short. They were fall, they were telling fractured messaging, and they weren't communicating the right things to the right audience. So after conducting a significant amount of research into Silverback, into understanding their business and their industry, the competitors that they, um, that they have and the audiences that they strive to speak to, we decided to take Silverback's brand to, in a new direction and apply more of an engaging storytelling approach to a very technical service and products in a way that was still highlighted the technical elements, but wasn't solely based on that. So what we did is we begin with the crafting that story and then we finished with coupling that story with a visual representation. So after identifying Silverback story, we then tell the, tell the story in a visual way using elements com commonly referred to as the look and feel of the brand. Um, a brand is not meant to serve as a visual grand standard. It's intended to inspire an overarching move, mood, pardon me, that will lead to more specific decisions during the implementation of specific marketing materials. So that's the conclusion of the awareness space. Does anybody have any comments or does anybody have any, any questions that they may have at this time? Feel free to type your message in. I'll wait a couple minutes and then we, I'll move on.
Okay, fantastic. So the research and comparison stage, this is a stage at which a potential customer actively seeks out your marketing content by following you on social media, signing up for newsletters or visiting your website. They will also start to pay close attention to what others are saying about you and how you respond to service requests and complaints. There's an interesting story that we have here at WJ actually. So twice a year, William Joseph holds what we call Innovation Day. It's when our whole staff get together and we talk about innovation in the marketing space. We put on presentations about trends. We want to, we talk about how we can move this, this needle forward in the marketing world. And it just so happens that the majority of the time, one of these Innovation Days happens at Christmas time. So our staff here in Saskatoon Actually, um, the flights were booked really early in the morning. And the staff in Saskatoon said to Ryan, our CEO, they said, look, if we're gonna get up and come out to Innovation Day, you better have the Baileys ready for us. So Ryan took it upon himself to take a picture of him pouring a teaspoon of Baileys into a cup of coffee and post it on LinkedIn about what Innovation Day means to us. Well, you can imagine that the feedback on that post went in two completely different directions. One direction was, oh my gosh, that's a great culture you have there at WJ. The other direction was completely not what was, what was expected. It was, Ryan, you're the reason that MAD exists. Um, my brother lost his life to drinking and driving and, and you're condoning drinking at work. This isn't great. And his LinkedIn profile just went nuts with about 300 responses to this to this post. So Ryan's first inclination was to delete the post, get rid of it, and um, it, and pretend like it didn't exist. But instead, he stepped aside from our innovation day. He went into his office and he actually responded to each and every one of those negative comments. Fast forward about six months, he's sitting in front of a client. Um, they're inking the deal to a, um, a marketing strategy and the gentleman lifts up his pen and looks at Ryan and says, look, Ryan, there's something I want to talk to you about. And it's that LinkedIn post about the coffee and the Baileys. And Ryan's thought to himself was, oh my gosh, not this post again. Will it ever just go away? And the gentleman said, Ryan, actually, the reason that I'm sitting in front of you today is because of the reason is because of how you handled that post and all the negative feedback that showed me your true character and what you truly care about. And that's why I wanna do business with you. So like I said, handling complaints in the right way is a very positive marketing tactic as well. So um, as we dive into this, I'll show you some of the tactics and considerations in the research and comparison phase. So um, this is when your website really comes in handy. Social media strategy, again, in terms of um, testimonials, um, reviews, the metadata within your website. We can dive into that a little bit in the next slide. Um, the reviews that you have, show, social proof, remarketing can be really effective. How good are your organization is at SEO, um, frequently asked questions. Live chat can also be an effective tactic. And the considerations to, to make sure about or think about are, do you have the proper resources in place on your website? Do you have the proper resources um, on your social media? Are you truly differentiated from everybody else, all of your competitors? Are you staying authentic to who you are and what your brand represents? Is your messaging targeted? Um, are we talking about the specific needs of the client at that specific time? And how are we doing regarding our search engine ranking? A lot of times when clients get into this research and comparison phase, they do search out comparison, uh, comparable options on those search engines. So how well you are set up, generally speaking, a client will look at, or a potential customer will look at two or three options. So ensuring that you're you're in that top two or three, or that you're even on the first page of those ranking sheets um, comes is very important. So one of the most effective ways to stand out from your competitors at this point is actually by offering robust digital self services. Customers who are evaluating at this stage of the life cycle start by trying to find the answers themselves. And if you can provide the proof that they are looking for when they're looking for it, you're miles ahead of the, co of the competition. 
Brands that publicly engage and provide customer service through the social media have an adver- uh, have an advantage at this stage as well. Like I said, social proof stories, testimonials, case studies um, are really important at this stage. So this slide is very busy. Um, and the most important fact is and I want you to take away from this slide, is that all of these initiatives make up your digital footprint. So your social media, your SEO, your digital ads, your website development, your email list, all of these make up your digital footprint. And the stronger that they play together, the better off your business will be when a potential client is in the research and comparison stages. Your website is obviously at the center of this digital footprint, and it can connect you with all the other digital initiatives in powerful ways to build your online reputation. Each campaign or project has a specific role to play when you engage in these tactics. Um, So you're definitely speaking to a specific need at a specific time. The next, this slide here, what I want you to take away from is, although the customer lifecycle stages are pretty consistent from organization to organization, the idea of those those stages has a wide range. So um, we deal at William Joseph with a lot of non-for-profit organizations. So um, thinking about how different the comparison stage may be, a person that's looking to buy a car will compare pair and act very differently from that person that's looking to attend your party. For the non-for-profits out there, and I just want to um, get you to think about how wide the range of comparison is, like I said, we deal with a lot of non-for-profits. So they're not necessarily competing for clients, but they're competing for donor dollars. So somebody that's engaged with the YWCA um, or looking to donate to the YWCA an organization that we do deal with here at wide um, at, at William Joseph, they may also be looking at a company like uh, another um, non for profit and looking to donate their dollars there. So really telling that story of what you stand for and connecting with those people and that audience on an emotional level will really go far. So that's showing you how wide the range of comparison can be. The next slide links back to that Silverback organization that we dealt with and we really helped build that awareness. This slide shows you how similar and in sync to the brand the social media channels are for Silverback. Everything has to be consistent. It has to look the same. It has to feel the same. And most importantly, it has to sound the same. What's that message that you're telling? So making sure that everything is is in sync is very critical. So that is the culmination of the research and comparison stage. Does anybody have any discussion points that they'd like to bring up at this point in time? Okay, so that actually concludes even the awareness space. So the A space is done with. The selection and purchasing stage is now in the B stage the buying space, and this is crunch time. This is when your customer makes their final decision. They are getting ready to come to your party. For those of you who operate on the e-commerce platforms, providing help to potential customers is critical at this point in time. Almost 85% of customers require some degree of support and are more import- And more importantly, about 50% of those people will abandon that purchase if they can't find that answer quickly. So lots of evidence suggests that live chat makes a big difference between making or losing a sale at this point in time and something to consider. Um, A potential customer could have gone through the first three stages, but I want you to keep this in mind too. This stage, the selection and purchase stage, could actually be the first interaction that a client or a potential client has with your company. So Let's say that, to give you an example, let's say that somebody's car breaks down in the front of your dealership. I was involved in the automotive world for a number of years, so this one's apparent to me. And let's say somebody's car breaks down in the front of your dealership. Um, They come into your dealership without any intention of purchasing a vehicle. 
but in, upon inspection of their vehicle, their vehicle's unfixable, they, they can't drive it anymore, they don't have an option other than to buy a new car. Are you ready to handle that type of an interaction? It, that's what I want you to think about when we get into this stage. Some tactics and considerations for this stage. Okay, so this is the stage in which you're going to be contracting somebody, um, acknowledging some kind of payment has been made is really important. Understanding your e-commerce platform, um, follow up can be really important. You've probably had a lot of engagement throughout this process and somebody's ready to make a selection. Have you followed up in time? Um, in Informative product pages are really important. Empty cart reminders, decision reinforcements. And the last one here is buying keywords. If you're really active in, this, in the SEO world, the language that people are using and searching for at this point in time in the client life or customer life cycle is, is, um, is very focused. So buying, buying keywords could be a tactic that you want to employ. Um, continuing the comp or sorry, making it easy for somebody to convert. This is about conversion, making it simple, um, making sure that you follow engagement through this. Sometimes it's going to um, require somebody to make an account, um, make a secure account. And this is huge for me. But remember that we're earning somebody's business here. And to say thank you could go a long way and does go a long way. So at this point in time, at this point of the buying decision process, the customer is ready to pull the trigger and make a purchase. They have made their decision about what product, service, brand, or solution is best for them, and they're ready to buy. The research and evaluation is over, so the customer now just needs a clear path to make that purchase. For a brand to help customers through this phase, you need to make it simple to buy. You also need to present additional reinforcements, things like reviews, testimonials, discounts, et cetera, that will lead to a purchase and, av and avoid a negative reinforcements like bad reviews, um, additional expenses, barriers, which will cause a customer to turn away. So one of the, I mean, one of the biggest players in the space, and, and we all know that uh, Amazon is huge in the e-commerce space. So they're successful for, for a number of different reasons. However, we've highlighted five of them here for us. So uh, as their logo suggests, they have everything somebody could possibly want from A to Z. So the options that they have within their e-commerce platform are almost endless. They have reviews right next to their product pages so that you can get um, you can re they they reinforce that decision you're about to make. They make buying quick and easy. They even make returns simple for you. And also, as the logo suggests, they put a smile on people's faces. So um, we all know Amazon's huge in this space. The next example is a local um, local example here, local story here when it comes to e-commerce. A couple of weeks ago, as COVID hit, uh, Nine Mile, and if you're not familiar with them, they're a brewing company here in Saskatoon. They had to find a way to sell their beer without operating a till system. And within days, they developed an online marketplace to sell beer. They made it easy for their customers to buy their product. They even went so far as to integrate this e-commerce platform into their inventory management system. So not only did they provide a need for their clients and their customers, but they also were strategic about it and they facilitated a need on a secondary level for the organization itself. So that is the conclusion um, of the selection and purchasing stage. Does anybody want to bring anything up before we head, head on? Okay, the experience retention and loyalty stage. This is actually the only linear stage of the customer life cycle. And by that, I mean, you cannot enter the experience stage without having purchased something first. Some people even feel that this is where the customer life cycle truly begins. This is where we say, welcome to the party. I want you to keep this in mind. It is almost seven times more expensive to attract a new customer as it is to, in, to keep an existing one. So really um, 
polishing our experience phase will go a long way. This is the stage consumers start to form their lasting opinion about your products and your brand. So experience, retention and loyalty tactics and considerations. So as we are still in the B space, in my eyes, there are no more, this, there's no more important stage than the experience stage. Experience is everything. Some of those tactics that you may want to consider if you haven't deployed them yet are onboarding packages or welcoming packages. We talked about the importance of the CRM earlier. This is at this point in time, a CRM helps you throughout the entire customer life cycle. However, at the experience retention and loyalty stages, this is where it can really automate things. It can create a consistent um, experience that's really key for a lot of clients. This is the stage where you may want to consider surveys as well. Get feedback from, from your existing clients, get feedback, even positive and negative to help you evolve and, and learn and, and move and craft that, that experience you want to um, give to your clients. Reward, reward programs are really beneficial. Keeping people up to date with newsletters, um, membership benefits are a huge tactic here. And then user guides and videos to ensure and do as much as you can to help support that experience. Considerations to, to take at this point in time. Make sure your client feels like they're number one. I'm sure that we all have a number of clients that we service. Making them feel like they are the only one can go a long way. Make sure that you have your their best interests in mind. And this is the point in time where you keep your promise. You've made a promise in that awareness space. Now's the time that you, they're, you're being judged to keep that promise. Clear expectations, and this goes for both sides, not only from somebody um, providing a service, but make sure expectations, sometimes we have expectations for our clients as well that they may not be aware of. Make sure you let them know as well. Expectations on both sides of the equation is really important. Customizing the experience, as we mentioned before, and making sure that we keep that communication ongoing. Just because we've made the sale doesn't mean our, our communication ends. It's actually when your communication needs to pick up more. Um, the path to buying is now complete. The customer has made their purchase. Now is the time when the customer asks, them, asks themselves, did I make the right decision? Does this fully meet the need, my needs? Um, they will decide if, the worth, uh, if it was worth the cost and if the brand delivers on their profit, promise. They will feel either satisfied or they'll have buyer's remorse. If it's the former, the customer could back and make come could come back and make another purchase. If it's the latter, the customer could reject the brand, never make another purchase, and even share their negative experiences with others. So we need to be ready to deal with that as well. This is your chance to prove that you're interested in building a relationship and not just making a sale. Customer service is the true test of how, a, how much a company values their clients. It's an important factor in deciding which brands to choose and remain loyal to. So we'll dive into some examples. Um, Ikea. Ikea is, is he, um, they have the idea and they're here to craft a predictable, enjoyable experience and to build trust and ultimately create loyal customers. And it's super easy. That's the experience that Ikea has crafted. Um, you walk into an Ikea store, they have childcare centers for you. So you don't even have to shop with your children. Everything is labeled properly. You know where it is. You know how to get it. And even at the end, that you can take a cheap uh, a break for some cheap food before you make your purchase and get your children back. So, in terms of the experience phase, uh, IKEA has it down. We all know this. We all probably know the Starbucks experience. So, why would you pay six dollars for a cup of coffee? coffee when you could probably go down the street and buy a coffee for a buck 50. The reason is Starbucks has crafted that experience. They tailor your coffee exactly how you want it. You have your own personal barista. They even go so far as to write your name on the cup. This is an interesting one um, and it falls more in that loyalty and rewards 
item. Tim Hortons is, has existed for years and years and years. However, recently, only recently, they've come up with a rewards program. Um, they launched it and it actually didn't go as planned. Sales went down. However, they were able to shift and change the program. They changed it to be more point-based and allows, allowed users to cut, customize what they want to spend their rewards on rather than only having three options. The lesson here I want you to take from this is it's okay to fail. The idea is to learn from it and plan strategically based on what you've learned. Adapt. This next example is probably one of the, the best in terms of Harley David, I love what Harley Davidson stands for. Harley Davidson actually is a lifestyle. If you see any of their ads that they that they put out, they don't talk about price. They don't really talk about features and benefits. They all talk about the fact that you're buying a lifestyle experience. You're you're not even actually buying what you're buying from them is the experience itself. You simply have to own a Harley Davidson bike to belong to that club. Any discussion points around the experience, retention, and loyalty phases before we move on? Okay, awesome. We're going to get into uh, advocates as this is the last stage. Um, we'll discuss who advocates are. So advocates are individuals who elevate your brand through word of mouth marketing. They leave positive reviews about your product and they refer, refer new customers and create content on your behalf. They are highly satisfied customers who share information about the products and services they use without incentive to do so. Their actions influence the, the opinion and purchase decision of a large audience. Thus, they help your brand become visible to larger audiences and increase revenue without having to sp spend on advertising or other traditional marketing initiatives. Handling your marketing in a more organic way, they get more people to your party. So ideas and tactics around um, advocates, their brand communities, their, they exist in chat groups, their ambassadors to your brand. Um, one way to leverage them is through case studies and another is testimonials. Considerations are, this is an untapped resource. Um, considerations keep the conversation going. The, the purchasing and the experience um, may have come to an end. However, they can still advocate on your behalf learn from them. This is another idea in terms of they, they've gone through the experience. They can, you can learn from them. They share your content. So like I said, this is an on top resource for so many companies out there. If there's one thing I want you to take away from this presentation itself is try and find a way to incorporate these individuals into your marketing program. 80% of companies are not even using advocates in their marketing strategy. Get them to share your content on social media. Get them to share your content via email or directly on your website, in online group chats, on boards and forums. The reason being is 83, they have an 83% likelihood that they're going to share your information. 90% of customers actually report that word of mouth marketing, word of mouth recommendations is a leading influence on their purchase decision. Advocates generate two times the sales of actually paid advertising because people trust friends and family and people they know. These people could be your best sales reps. And the greatest part is you don't have to pay them. You simply need to find a way to tap into them. On top of that, advocates actually spend two times more than the average company on their favorite brands and loyal customers are act, are worth up to 10% or sorry 10 times the value of the first purchase the first time that they've ever bought from you so this is an example here at William Joseph that we have um one of our strategy our strategists came to Ryan and said Ryan we believe so heavily in content marketing our content needs to exist in a more um in a broader spectrum. So we put out this 
WJ Magazine. It replaced our brochure that that really remains stale. This content gets updated twice a year. We send it out to 15 thousand businesses across Western Canada. And where this becomes interesting in the advocacy space is inside this magazine, every single time we highlight some case studies and clients that we've been successful with. In that, when they receive this mark, this magazine, they generally ask for more copies of the magazine. So we'll give them 10 or 20 more. They will share this um, magazine with friends and family. And now it's become a referral piece for us. And one referral, one successful referral from this magazine and the return on investment is paid for. This magazine is paid for. So it's become a huge tool for us at WJ. The second example in this section is actually Sephora. Sephora does an amazing job of helping customers feel connected with their online community in terms of advocacies. They have something called Beauty Talk. It's a massive, well-organized forum where users can ask questions, share ideas, and have their beauty quagmires solved by other enthusiasts. Their beauty board offers another way to engage with the the products that they have and the community. Users upload pictures of themselves wearing Sephora products. The photos then link to a product page on their website and uh, all of the items used. I am a father of two boys and I know the Lego story also well. Um, one of the incredible things that Lego does is um, they tap into their Lego enthusiasts by having them their design ideas on the shelves and being awarded a percentage of the sales of the product. So um, with Lego ideas, anyone who loves Lego from five to 95 can check out proposals, vote for their le favorite Lego designs, leave feedback and submit their own ideas. The most popular ones actually go to market and Lego deploys. This, this type of online community doesn't just offer up fantastic data um, for the brand. It also helps people uh, keep people interested in what's going on and ongoing uh, contests with Lego. The last example we have here of an uh, of a brand community is actually Xbox, and it works for Xbox because they don't um, because they have customers that are much more than your average enthusiast. They actually go above and beyond in creating a an. an a, advocacy group because not just anybody can be an xbox ambassador or advocate these individuals have to have a minimum game store in xbox oh sorry let me loop to that slide um these individuals have to have a minimum game score on xbox and an active xbox live gold membership Ambassadors provide huge support for Xbox themselves to both gamers and the brand by offering support via official Xbox forums. They host Twitch shows, they create YouTube videos, and they provide, provide product feedback to Xbox themselves so Xbox can learn. In return, ambassadors are rewarded with games, they're rewarded with branded merchandise and other perks that specifically appeal to these hard hardcore gamers. This is an advocacy group basically on steroids. This It's amazing. And finally, the end goal is always loyalty. All of our initiatives throughout this customer lifecycle is geared to create a loyal customer and loyal brand advocates. We want people to come back and we want people to speak positively about us. So that's the end goal. Jumping into today's takeaways. So today's takeaways, How I want you to go back and think, how does your business address the eight stages of the customer life cycle? How do you address any gaps that you may have? I want you to think strategically at each stage. Your customers, potential customers, have needs that are specific to where they are in the customer life cycle. How do you address those specifically? Constantly evolve just because something failed in the way that you um, delivered it doesn't mean it's a bad thought learn from why it failed and evolve and adapt um, and then add value whenever we can whether it's to your clients directly to the industry itself do what you can to increase the value of what you have to offer so with that i want to thank everybody for your time today 
Um, I hope you gain something from this presentation and I'd love to open it up to any discussion that anybody may have. Okay. Um, so I'll read the question out loud. Um, I know you mentioned that it is about seven times harder to attract a new customer than it is to get an existing customer to come back. I'm having a hard time expanding outside of Saskatchewan. Well, my sales are good locally. If I want to grow my business, do you suggest focusing my marketing budget to my existing companies and hope it grows from word of mouth? Or is there something a business should be split and put money into advertising towards both new and existing customers? So, yeah, I'd, I'd want to take a, a look at um, um, your existing customers. It's definitely something I always recommend. The answer is yes, I would say look into ideas to tap into those existing um, customers and get the get them to come back. Um, love to carry this conversation to understand a little bit more about what you're you're offering there, Alyssa, um, and 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 chat about a little bit further. But it's always a good idea to tap into that existing client base. They've they've already. I always say it's easier to get somebody to say yes to you again than it is to get, get somebody to say yes to you for the first time. So finding a way to to capitalize on that, I would say, is a great decision. Thanks, Melissa. I appreciate your uh, your comment. That's awesome. So yeah, with loyalty programs and our experience on how businesses have successfully implemented them. So um, we at WJ, we really focus on that experience piece and, and that loyalty programs are something that companies really, um, we haven't had a lot of experience in developing those. A lot of times we'll make that recommendation and clients will go away and look to facilitate that on their, their own accord. There's not a ton of examples in my history with William Joseph that we've um, that we've developed them specifically. Um, we've there's a non for profit organization here in Saskatoon actually that we deal with where we've actually more created those brand um, brand ambassadors we've recommended and we're actually working through that right now. Thanks, Lindsay. I'll also just add on that with the loyalty programs, you you really have to understand the wants and needs of those um, those ambassadors and how you can so you can tailor that loyalty program around what they want. So really diving into their their interests. Um, example: Tim Hortons right there. They thought they were developing a customized approach to their loyalty program, and they really weren't. So that's the lesson that they learned is that. Loyal, they, people didn't want to be told what to spend their money on. They wanted to make that decision themselves. Yeah, so definitely. Um, what are some of the criteria one should use to guide and prioritize the various tactics for each stage? I really think that comes down to where you're being effective and where you're not. So taking a look at the spectrum of, of tactics that you have deployed and, and doing some research and getting some understanding of what has been successful and what hasn't and where your gaps are in the customer life cycle. That's what I would say. It, uh, then you can you can then take that information and that data to appropriately initiate certain tactics. So understanding where your where your gap is by doing a little bit of research for uh, research first.
Awesome. You're welcome. Yeah, definitely at William Joseph, uh, we don't make recommendations without the research and data to back them up, as we said earlier. So it's really integral to, to do that, that research, conduct that research um, before you make any kind of uh, any kind of decision. For everybody out there as well, I'm going to put my email at, oh, 100%. Actually, it's one of the things I thought about this morning um, before jumping into this uh, uh, presentation. You can definitely have an advocate who has not been a past customer, 100%. Um, they're... If your brand resonates strong enough with those individuals, there's, um, I know myself, that I've advocated for businesses that I've that I've never bought from because I know they do good business. Uh, I know they stand for something that that's above and beyond, and I would have no problem referring somebody to them based on simply their reputation that they have in the industry. Hundred percent. Great question, Megan. So I'm um, gonna put my email address on here. If anybody does wanna reach out um, for any specific need, feel free. Um, I again, thank everybody for their, for their time today. I appreciate it. I wish you all great success and Thanks again for taking the time. I will turn this back over to Carly at WESC to conclude the presentation or webinar, sorry. Great, thank you so much, Preston, for taking the time to share with us today. Um, I also wanna thank everyone that was able to join for today's webinar. You will be able to view this webinar on demand on our website by the end of the day today. Um, since it is an Entrepreneurs Week, we actually have two upcoming webinars this week. Tomorrow is a panel discussion called Rebounding from the Crisis, What's Next? And Friday is another panel discussion called it takes, uh, What It Takes to Succeed as a Tech Entrepreneur. Registration for both of these is now open on our website at west.ca. Um, bye, everyone, and thank you. Have a great afternoon. Thanks, Carly. Thank you again, everybody.